Question number one. Is pop rock music a way to preach in today's world? How to use it to reveal orthodoxy to people? That's a, it's a very good question. It's a, it's a difficult question to answer uh, for me because there's a lot of nuance involved. So um, I would say that um, the first uh, purpose of art is to awaken the the heart and mind. Um, it's it's not so much uh, to preach necessarily, but to uh, reveal. And there's a great mystery in the human heart in terms of how a person um, is drawn towards uh, a spiritual life or drawn towards uh, the mercy of Christ. And sometimes if artists uh, are too focused on uh, preaching, uh, it can actually become a bit of a, um, a bit of a barrier uh, for people to, to listen and, and, and have open hearts. Um, but I do believe that artists should, um, they should make songs and um, stories, um, they should paint pictures uh, that are coming from the depth of who they are and the honesty of who they are. And if, if that includes an artist who has experienced um, some of the beauty and mystery of Christ, then um, absolutely that should uh, naturally and organically come out. Um, we see this throughout history, um, how artists, uh, Christ and the arts, um, are very interconnected. They're sort of destined for each other. Question number two. You are never ashamed to confess your faith in a society which is rather hostile towards Christianity. Have you ever been ridiculed for your faith? This is another uh, very serious question. And um, I think that uh, in our day and age, there is an element of, um, well, an element of struggle and uh, persecution that anyone who is is uh, vocally expressing their faith in Christ is is going to experience uh, these struggles um, I think that would be uh, you know someone in the entertainment industry uh, someone in uh, going to university as a young adult um, Wherever you're surrounded, it could be a work environment, wherever you're surrounded by um, um, ideologies that are opposed to um, opposed to Christ and um, the Christian revelation, there's going to be tension. These things have occurred, but um, I don't focus on them and um, everybody has their, their journey and their reasons for these things. So, um, but there's a lot of tension and a lot of, a lot of pressure in our times. Um, and I think the solution is, um, is not to become, is not to fight ideology, the ideologies of the world with, um, a, a Christianized, uh, ideology, I, I, I don't, the revelation of Christ is not an ideology. It is, um, it's the revelation of a personal God. And um, I think that we fight ideology with uh, mercy and love and grace and truth. Um, but we don't come back with our own ideology because that just uh, furthers divisions between people. Okay, question number three. What is your advice to those who avoid confessing their faith for this reason? Whew, that's a tough question. Um, 
I think that these things come down to um, falling in love uh, with Christ on a personal level. Um, everything we do uh, in our lives uh, comes from this internal place uh, that is a journey um, and sometimes it fluctuates, um, but, you know, one of the things I'm reminded of in thinking about this is that, um, that if, if and when, by the grace of God, we begin to have what the scriptures talk about, um, the fear of the Lord, and this is not a humanistic, um, being afraid of a um, wrathful, petty deity, but the fear of the Lord is, um, it speaks more to um, uh, humility and wonder and being in awe. You know, a child um, has a, a certain healthy, beautiful fear of their parents, not because they're afraid of them, not because they're afraid that they're gonna do anything uh, mean to them, but just because um, when a parent walks into the room, they're much bigger and their voice is deeper and they know so much more than the child does. And so um, when there's a healthy relationship between a parent and a child, the child has this holy uh, fear. And it's similar to that, I think, with the fear of the Lord. And when we fear men, um, we lose uh, the fear of the Lord. And when we um, have this beautiful, holy fear of the Lord um, through the grace of the Holy Spirit, um, we, we no longer fear men and uh, care about what others think or say about us. And um, so I think that there's something there uh, in terms of asking uh, the Holy Spirit to increase this holy and beautiful fear of the Lord. Um, and again, it's, it's personal uh, love and for Christ. And we know that it's not that we love him first. It's that he loved us first, as St. John tells us in the scriptures. Um, he loved us first. And so it's a revelation of receiving the beauty and the goodness and the mercy and the love of Christ if we really believe that he voluntarily went to the cross, not only for the whole world, for the sins of the world, but personally for me and for you as if, as if no one else existed. That's how personal it was for Christ to take, take my sins upon himself. This revelation births uh, incredible uh, love and gratitude. And that's where I believe um, the fathers of the church and the saints uh, show us that this, this is where um, uh, courage comes from. It, it's, it's a revelation of, um, of the mercy and grace of God. Okay, next question. Is there a Romanian saint that you especially honor? Uh, this is a wonderful question because um, we have been um, a part of a Romanian parish for the last year, and um, it has been an incredible experience uh, for myself and my family. Um, and I'm just now learning about uh, some of the Romanian saints. Interestingly enough, um, the, the two um, that have come to my mind are not officially canonized yet, but nevertheless, um, um, I personally believe, in, and hundreds of thousands and millions of people also believe that these, these um, holy people will be uh, canonized, and that's uh, Father George Calciu and also um, Elder... Um, Arsene Boca. Um, I learned about Father George a few years ago and was so 
just deeply overwhelmed by his story. And um, uh, I watched a documentary as well on his life. And uh, I've met some people that knew him. And um, he is just uh, an absolute incredible um, witness and uh, saint in our times. And just recently, I, I was learning a little bit about Father Arseny, and um, um, I was as well completely uh, overwhelmed by what I was experiencing. And the next time I went to the Divine Liturgy after reading about his life, um, I, ex I experienced something very profound uh, uh, with him. There was so much grace present. So I'm actually very excited to learn more about him and... Um, and more of the Romanian saints. A beautiful friend of ours uh, recently gave us a list of, of Romanian saints for us to, uh, uh, to learn more about, so I'm excited about that. Next question. What is your patron saint and the patron saint of your family? <clears throat> uh, my patron saint is Saint John the Divine or Saint John the Theologian. And um, I have always had a very deep connection with him. Even before uh, I understood the communion of saints, I grew up uh, without this uh, revelation in my life. But um, I felt very close to St. John because the gospel of St. John was always my favorite um, growing up. I always felt a very deep connection with him and his, his letters as well in the scriptures. So also um, the closeness that St. John has to the mother of God is very um, mysterious and very powerful. Um, Christ from the cross um, saying to the apostle John, uh, behold your mother and saying to, to Mary, behold your son. And um, it's just, there's quite a mystery there. So um, I feel like uh, St. John has helped me become closer to the mother of God because again, I wasn't raised with um, any uh, veneration of Mary. So I'm very thankful for his prayers to help me um, approach the Theotokos. Um, so, and I, and I feel very blessed and honored to have uh, been to her garden of the Holy Mountain uh, many times now, uh, which has also uh, been an unspeakable blessing in experiencing uh, the grace of the Mother of God. In terms of our, we actually don't have a, a saint of our family. Um, Saint Nicholas is uh, the wonder worker, is um, the patron saint of our, our oldest son. Saint Anastasia, the great martyr, is um, the patron of our, our daughter. And Saint Titus, the apostle, is the patron of our youngest son. And Saint Elizabeth, the new martyr, is my wife's patron saint. Um, so uh, we do have an incredible icon uh, that, was, that was made um, for us as a gift, which we cherish with, with all of our saints on one icon. But um, yeah, we don't have a, a family saint, so maybe we will someday. <laughs> okay, last question. We live in a time when political correctness is more and more dominant and affects orthodox values. What is your position concerning this trend and what is your advice for Christians on this issue? Well, this is also, well, this is touching on, on the uh, divisiveness of our culture right now. This is very difficult because, again, I think there's a lot of nuance that needs to take place. One of the difficulties with um, new media, uh, with social media, is um, people have lost the ability to have in-depth, uh, respectful, conversations and dialogue, and um, people have retreated to their ideological corners and basically just throw stones at each other. Um, so I think it's the, the, the role of Orthodox Christians to seek out the royal path 
Um, Christ is the one who unites us. He is uh, the image of the invisible God, and he is also um, uh, the icon of the true man, of, um, of, of true humanity. So, um, you know, this is something that we need to, to hold on to. Um, at the same time, Christ said that I, I've, I come with a sword. And so there is something um, in uh, holding firm to the truth uh, that will cause, um, uh, I mean, it, it comes with a sword. And uh, we know this. And I think in general, generally speaking, I think uh, political correctness has gone uh, way out of hand and stifled uh, freedom of speech and stifled um, many people's ability to reach one another. Um, and uh, that's a huge problem. It's, it's a huge problem. So, um, but again, um, the answer to these problems is not to become uh, militant and legalistic in spirit. Um, Orthodox Christians uh, should not um, adopt a, a pharisaical uh, mentality to, um, to combat the difficulties that are occurring in the world. Um, we need to uh, remain connected to the holy tradition and connected to the lives of the saints and um, the, the vision of the fathers, which is that the church is a hospital for the sick. And um, what we experience in our journey, um, our journey of salvation is divine therapy. Um, and... You know, any of us who are without sin can go ahead and cast the first stone at the world, but we all have our own sins, and, and um, you know, that's one of the most beautiful things about orthodoxy is that it, it, it teaches me to focus on my own uh, need for God and my own repentance. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner. Uh, we pray before Holy Communion every Sunday, um, that, um, that we confess that I, I am the chief of sinners. Um, and this is what has been handed down to us. So one of the things that Elder Arseny said, um, and it's echoing uh, what St. Silouan and St. Paisios have said as well, I think this is something that the saints of our times are uh, really, really beating this drum, so to speak, and it's very important for us to listen um, Father Arseny talks about humility is the highest virtue. And uh, St. Paisios echoes this, uh, as I said, St. Silouan, um, Christ-like humility and love for one's enemies. This is the only thing that is going to eventually reach um, people that are more and more uh, I would say, brainwashed um, and possessed by their ideologies. Um, what is going to pull people back from um, the frenzy, the, the herd mentality and the frenzy of ideology um, in every direction, right, left, whatever direction it is, what's going to pull people back from this is Christ-like humility and love for one's enemies. This is the beauty that Dostoevsky speaks of that will save the world. Um, so um, it, it is my humble prayer that we maintain that true, um, that orthodox spirit, orthodox being true glory. So it, it's my humble prayer that we maintain um, this true glory of Christ-like humility and love for one's enemies. You can't fake that. Um, this is where uh, the real spiritual uh, battle uh, takes place. 
Um, so if we truly love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us and we don't judge others, but we do uh, maintain um, truth, we do maintain the Christian revelation, um, then um, I think in the long run, people will, will start to glimpse um, this beauty and perhaps maybe want that in their own lives. So um, we do need to be strong and uh, unafraid, but we also need to be wise because, um, you know, wise as a serpent and innocent as, as doves, as, as our Lord says. So um, forgive me for anything uh, that I've said that is not um, uh, from the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I pray that um, God blesses you. Uh, please pray for me. And uh, as we continue to rejoice um, together in um, Christ's victory over death. Much love.